Well, to get this whole ball rolling, um, we're going to uh, take a look at what Aristotle has to say about the categories. Now, like I said, Aristotle is much more interested in the particular things than uh, Plato is. Uh, we can't forget the particular things. And if we want to understand what it means to exist, we have to look at the things that actually exist. So uh, his way of doing this is the categories, right? The categories describe uh, subjects, right? The predicates describe the subject. And uh, this is kind of not only the building block of language, but just what existence is, right? These substances, they have these predicates. And we got nine predicates overall. Uh, so I thought we might have a little practice with them. Let's get a little practice with Aristotle's categories. I want you to be able to define these categories and uh, get some examples of, of you know, get some examples of how to uh, how to apply them. So remember that the categories are predicates for subjects, right? These are ways that we describe uh, a subject. Now let's start with the first one. No pun intended. We got quantity. Now quantity is basically just any way that we can start measuring or counting. Uh, uh, a subject. So in this case, this thing has four legs, it has two eyes, it has one tail. We could talk about the length of this critter, which I'm going to guess is some around eight inches or so. Uh, we could talk about its weight, which is probably less than a pound. So or less than one pound, maybe we could talk about 15 ounces, right? Something like that. So quantity is really just any way we can count or number or measure uh, a subject. Now, quality is a, a bit more abstract. If quantity is pretty specific, quality goes in the other direction. Uh, you might think of quality as just how uh, this thing sort of affects you, right? Or, or, or maybe uh, uh, maybe just like impressions that you have is so green, right? The, the color of this thing is uh, its quality. Its skin is rough. Uh, its skin is also scaly, right? It's not smooth uh, skin like ours. Uh, so these, these are kind of abstract um, notions or, or ways that that the um, that the uh, uh, subject uh, uh, affects you maybe is is one way of thinking about it relation is uh, how you can compare uh, this subject to other subjects right it's always going to involve two different subjects always going to involve two things so for instance this is on top of a branch right on top of the branch and um, we can even talk about it being in front of the camera these are both relations. Uh, for this uh, for this uh, critter here uh, Place You know place is basically the location of the thing and by the way here's on top of the branch again and in front of the camera <laughs> These are both fine uh, For relation and for place. So this is kind of maybe a little lesson to learn about uh, uh, Categories just because a predicate is in one category doesn't mean it can't be in another. No, it, it could be in more than one uh, category, and that's fine. Another description or predicate for this critter in terms of place is that it's outside. And uh, maybe we could also talk about its natural habitat. So these critters typically naturally live in one area of the planet and all, all others. Time uh, is, you know, kind of ways that we could talk about when this thing is. So. Right now it's in daytime. <laughs> uh, uh, this critter is outside. We could even talk about the length of its life, right? That would be uh, time. And I probably come to think of it also work for quantity, right? We could talk about um, uh, measuring its life in terms of quantity. Posture is, uh, I think, a handy way to think of posture is a special kind of relation, right? How are the parts of the thing related to each other? So um, the legs are currently under the body. And running along the the middle of uh, the critter, the head is turned slightly to, slightly to the left of the body. Its eyes are looking forward right, to that, or at least that one is. <laughs> you may or may not be aware of this, but this critter's eyes can work independently of each other. So at the very least, the right eye is looking forward. Possession is what the thing has, right? That's kind of an obvious way of talking about it, what's currently holding the branch. But Aristotle also liked to talk about possession in terms of the capabilities or powers or habits that the thing has or the subject has. So in this case, this subject, it, it, its skin can change its color. It has the ability to change its skin color. It has the ability for the eyes to move independent of each other. It's also exothermic. That means that uh, it relies upon its environment for its body temperature, right? We're in, humans are endothermic. Or we, we regulate our own body temperature. So action, right? This is how the subject is acting upon something else. It's also a special kind of relation, right? 
a particular kind of relation. So in this case, again, it's grasping the branch, right? This critter is grab grasping the branch. So action is how it's acting upon something else. Passion or passivity is how it's being acted upon. So we can even talk about it's being supported by the branch, right? At once it's holding onto the branch and it's being supported by the branch. Uh, this is also being illuminated by the sun, right? This critter is being illuminated by the sun. This is a passivity. And these are the nine categories. And sometimes Aristotle would talk about the substance or what we might even consider the form of the thing as, uh, as a description, right? as a predicate. Uh, so, you know, kind of sort of sometimes as the 10th uh, uh, category. So in this case, uh, right, this critter is a type of lizard. That's this genus, if you remember the discussion about form. It's a type of lizard. Uh, and uh, it has, uh, see if I can pronounce this correctly, uh, zygodactylous feet. <laughs> now that's a really fancy word, meaning it's got two, ter two toes in front and two toes in the back, right, that, that, that grasp. So you could take a look at the picture there and you can see two toes grabbing one side and the other two toes grabbing on the other. Uh, the skin changes colors. You know, I actually looked and I'm kind of a little disappointed there isn't a word, or at least I couldn't find one that that means that the skin changes colors. I kind of think chromatomorph would be a really great word, but I'm too chicken to try to start that myself. Amongst other kind of powers or abilities, uh, or what, what makes, excuse me, <laughs> what makes uh, this uh, critter different than uh, other lizards is that it has this rapidly extruding tongue and it uses it to grab uh, food as well as a prehensile tail. So, you know, you kind of put all this together, we call it chameleon, right? Chameleon, and that would be a predicate in, the sen in this sense, uh, describing uh, this subject. So I thought I'd give kind of like a little introduction into what form is for Aristotle, because he, he does something slightly different than Plato. So if you remember with Plato, if you talked about the form of a thing, say we're talking about the form of a square, we're looking for all and only what is true about a square, uh, you know, as opposed to what all squares have in common. We're looking for all and only squares have in common. So uh, Aristotle, in turn, is going to appeal to what's called genus and species. And I'll give a little bit of an explanation uh, for that. So uh, if we're looking at form, right? If we're looking at the form of a chair, Plato's going to look for what's all and only true about chairs, what all and only chairs have in common. Aristotle is going to appeal to the genus and the species. So let's start with uh, the genus. The genus is the kind to which the chair belongs. In this case, if we're doing the genus of a chair, the kind to which the chair belongs. And the species is how it's different from other members of its kind. Okay, so let's try this with genus then. So what's the genus of chair? All right, what's the genus of chair? Well, it's not chair, right? <laughs> chair is the form we're looking for. Chair is the name of this thing. And it's not dining room chair either, right? That's a more specific kind of chair than, you know, chair in general, what all and only chairs have in common, or chair in general, I should say, not all and only, what chairs have in common, right? So to what kind does the chair belong? Well, it belongs to furniture, right? It belongs to furniture. It's a kind of furniture. Well, now that we have the genus, let's take a look at the species, right? So uh, what are other kinds of furniture then? Well, we've got, I mean, lots of different kinds of furniture. We got, when we chairs, one, we also got, what, tables and bookcases and couches and, um, you know, ottomans and <laughs> all other kinds of stuff, right? So uh, we're looking for what's, what makes chair different from other kinds of furniture. Well, let's start with what makes, you know, something that's pretty different from chair, uh, say a desk or a table. Well, one really big difference between a chair and a desk or a table is that you sit on a chair. Okay, oh, okay, so I sit on a chair. Well, what makes, are there other kinds of furniture that you sit on? Well, yeah, there's couches, right? So what's gonna make a chair different from either a couch or a bench? Well, chairs are for only one person to sit on, right? Chairs are for only one, one person to sit on. Are there other kinds of furniture? I mean, have we nailed it down enough? Have we narrowed it down enough? It's a piece of furniture that you sit on, the only one person sits on? Well, you know, that still leaves stool, right? There's Stools, you could, you could sit on stools and their furniture. Well, then what makes a chair different from a stool? Well, a, a chair uh, has a back on it, right? Stools do not, right? Stools don't have a back on it. So if we ask Aristotle for the form of chair, he's gonna ask for the genus and species. And the genus is that's a piece of furniture. The species, is it, has a, a, it has a back for one person to sit 
Right? It has a back for one person to sit. So a chair is a piece of furniture with a back for one person to sit. By the way, this is just a really handy way to define anything. Find the genus and the species. You can come up with a single sentence definition for just about anything. So if we return to our square, right? Plato loves squares because they're mathematical figures. Uh, he would say the form of a square is an equiangular, equilateral, quadrilateral. This is what all and only squares have in common. And that's, that's fine. That's not a bad thing. If we're going to take Aristotle's approach, we might define it a little differently and say it's a figure with four sides. Right, so that maybe that's the genus, a figure with four sides that are equal in length and have equal angles. Right, that's uh, the genus and the species sort of definition that Aristotle would give us. Mm -hmm.